So now comes the inevitable dissection of the Eternals from the MCU. So let's get right to it. What are the Eternals? Well, essentially they're a creation of Jack Kirby, who also did the New Gods for DC Comics, though I think the Eternals is, unfortunately, a lesser effort. They're basically dumbed-down versions of other characters, right? Icarus is Superman, essentially, and he even looks like Superman in the film. But some of the characters I do recall from the comics, though again, my main source are the 80s and 90s. So Cersei had a bit of a cameo in the Infinity Gauntlet, but it was brief. Eros was slightly bigger, and Eros is Thanos' brother. I'm going to talk about him soon enough. But overall, you have to be honest, these were not very popular characters, even in the comics. I do know Cosmic Marvel. I actually like a lot of Silver Surfer. I have a lot of issues with that. I collected Adam Warlock comics. So I'm aware of the Cosmic part of the MCU in terms of the comic books. But yeah, I don't really remember these people, so... They weren't super popular. Some of the characters have a little bit of potential. So that's who they are. And what is the film? It hasn't come out yet, but from everything I've gathered through research, it's very, very mixed. The ratings are a little bit all over the place. And the strongest ratings actually go from 6 to 7. And the more hostile ratings go to 5 to 6. So now officially in Rotten Tomatoes, it is quote, rotten. It's below 60%. But who knows? Maybe it'll rise up with more positive reviews. But... I think overall, the basic consensus is this is an okay Marvel movie with some interesting ambitions. It's got a good cast and a solid director, but it seems torn between doing the usual MCU formula and doing something that's consistent with its kind of this epic storytelling. And in terms of the film, there's really not much. Essentially, the Eternals were away for a long while because they're created by the Celestials, who are these very mysterious, enigmatic beings. A threat arises and they have to come back together. Probably the major thing here, which a lot of fans are going to ask, is, well, how is this compatible with Infinity War? I should be clear, I don't think Infinity War was a very good movie. I didn't like Infinity War. I didn't like Endgame. But the not very good explanation is essentially that Thanos is a half-breed. He's not fully an Eternal, and he's not fully a Deviant, who are the enemies of the Eternals. So, essentially, as a half-breed, presumably, the Eternals didn't really need to check up on him. Yeah, that's pretty thin. But the Deviants are back, apparently, somehow. They were brought back through the Infinity Gauntlet, and the Eternals have to spring back and defeat them. We'll listen to Yellow Flash, who points to some of the problems, but also, unintentionally, the virtues of this version of the Eternals. They're doing their best to prop it up, but surprisingly, a lot of critics here are saying it's shit. So, uh, I'm not surprised. You could tell by the trailers it was shit. So, the biggest thing with this movie is uh, there's two guys that date each other. Apparently, this is the the key element to this movie and why you should see it. In fact, it's life-saving. It's going to save lives, everybody. That's the kind of movie this is. It's going to save lives. It's going to change the world. It is going to make the world better. Damn the story. Damn plot points. What matters? Well, I agree. There's really not much here. There's probably nothing that's very compelling to be any real competition for either Dune or other really strong fantasy or superhero films this year, whether the Snyder Cut, Dune, or other very ambitious sci-fi films. That said, uh, if the you know actors are sincere that they want this cool queer representation, I have no problem with that. Again, I'm not a homosexual. I don't know how deeply people want this, but I guess if it touches certain people, hey, that's fine. And because he doesn't know the comics very much, Yellow Flash seems to not know that Eros being revealed as queer in this version of the Eternals is not much violating the canon. That's very much in character with Eros. Whether they do anything with it, we shall see. Again, having a first official queer couple or whatever within the MCU, it's fine. I have no big dispute with that. But again, I think it just highlights that beyond a few superficial twists, this is basically the MCU formula. They're playing with a few things here and there that should be credited, but it is basically the same old thing all over again, but just not done as well as in other films. That said, from my perspective, I do think there are some individual shots which are incredibly beautiful, and those should not be overlooked. The MCU doesn't really do that much with cinematography or the art of lighting or composing images, so I think Chloe deserves a lot of points for at least doing that much visually, doing something very stunning with the time and budget she had. But uh, I have to say, from a Dune fan angle, I am uh, not at all upset that this is not going to be real competition for Dune. It just feels like it's going to be a very warmed-over, usual MCU film that'll find its audience. 
they'll like it well enough, but it's nothing groundbreaking. If you're a big fan of some of these characters, that's fine. I only know some of them a little bit, and they were fine in the comics, but again, usually the MCU versions are much inferior. So I'll give Eternals a chance, but unfortunately, I just have to say there's doesn't really seem to be much there. Is the kind of critical thrashing it's getting deserved? People are probably just overdoing it in terms of the expectations they want from a film nowadays, especially after Dune and the Snyder Cut. But I gotta say, I don't see compelling reasons why they're lying or that they're deceiving people. It feels like they were trying for an epic movie and they give you some hints, they give you some good moments, but ultimately they don't. it doesn't hang together. They do the usual big stupid CGI fight at the end. And aside from some individual great shots, there's really not much here. That's the basic autopsy of the Eternals, but hopefully I'm wrong. Maybe there is something amazing and groundbreaking. I will give it a chance, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. Thanks for listening.